This module focuses on the 20s, 30s and World War II. During this period, imperial monarchies collapsed, business was booming, automobiles, rayon, radios, cigarettes, refrigerators, telephones, cosmetics and electrical devices were sold in huge quantities. There was also a boom in higher education, self-improvement books and people travelled abroad. The Prohibition Amendment was passed, making it illegal to distill brew and sell alcoholic beverages in 1920 USA. This was ignored by many and a new institution, the Speakeasy, a clandestine drinking club for drinking, dining and dancing, replaced the Salon. After Prohibition was lifted in 1933, the Speakeasy made a rapid transition into the nightclub. The Jazz Age was a movement that took place during the 1920s from which jazz music and dance emerged. The movement came about with the introduction of mainstream radio and the end of the war. This era ended in the 1930s with the beginning of the Great Depression but has lived on in American pop culture for decades. In urban areas, African American jazz was played on the radio more often than in the suburbs. 1920s youth used the influence of jazz to rebel against the traditional culture of previous generations. This youth rebellion of the 1920s went hand in hand with fads like bold fashion statements, flappers and new radio concerts. Soon after the war, there was a revolution in mores and values in terms of morality, especially in the behavior of women. Sexual theories of Sigmund Freud gained ground. The flapper, as she was nicknamed, seemed free from all the restraints of the past. This change in attitude, ideologies and behaviour was reflected in women's costume. In 1929, the stock market collapsed, creating a period now known as the Great Depression in Europe and USA. Unemployment was widespread and Adolf Hitler came to power in Germany in 1933 and established a one-part dictatorship. This was followed by the Second World War that began in 1939. In 1941, the Japanese army attacked Pearl Harbor. Americans did not experience the dev devastation of homes and communities during World War II. Goods and food was rationed. There was restriction on fabric usage for clothing, which affected the styles worn at the time, which used minimum materials. Most able-bodied men enlisted into the armed services. Women entered factories and took on jobs in factories. Their clothing took a drastic turn as the factories required specialized clothing for jobs that involved active physical labor. The war ended in 1945. While most of Europe was now rebuilding their devastated lands, the United States emerged from fighting with its lands unscathed and its economy intact but millions of families had experienced the loss of one or more men in battle. Silent films had become a part of everyday life by 1920. The movies brought visions of glamorous actors and actresses into every small town of America. Life depicted in films helped reinforce urban tastes, dress and an urban way of living. Rudolph Valentino and Joan Crawford were some of the fashion setters of the time. Talking pictures began in 1927. Many films portrayed a world quite different from what the USA was facing at the time. Women were lavishly gowned and houses magnificently furnished. Movies did stress patriotic themes. Van Johnson and Spencer Tracy were portrayed as true American heroes. In Europe, royalty and cafe society influenced fashion. British Prince of Wales, later known as the Duke of Windsor, became King Edward VIII in 1936. He was an important style setter of the times. Wealthy Americans and Europeans were photographed at fashionable resorts. They wore much sportswear and became popular for tennis, riding and skiing. Brenda Frazier, one of the debutantes, helped popularize a new style, the strapless evening gown. Participation in spectator and active sports such as baseball, college football, boxing, tennis and golf increased and were widely followed. Women as leading sports figures was a new phenomena. 
this wide participation in spectator sports meant more people were eager to participate actively, which increased the popularity of sport. Sports stars appeared in films. Sports clothing became important as outdoor recreation activities expanded. Soon sportswear emerged as a separate clothing category. Once the automobile had become practical, special costume for motoring disappeared. As women began to drive, the need for shorter and less cumbersome skirts was evident. Women walked less and parasols were unnecessary in closed vehicles. Cars encouraged the use of wristwatches and smaller hats. Canes and walking sticks went out of style. This period also witnessed technological developments that affected fashion. Man-made fibers like rayon and acetate gained popularity. Synthetic fiber like nylon was also introduced. It was for underwear and stockings. Metal hooks and eye were developed for garment closures. The zip was invented and used in corsets, sleeping bags, money belts, boots, etc. Zippers were incorporated in clothing only after British royalty and couturiers introduced them in clothing. Paris was cut off from England and America during World War II. Designs of Chanel typified the style of the 1920s, Vionette the early 30s and Schiaparelli the later 30s. Elsa Schiaparelli was famous for using colors in unusual decorative effects. She also coined the label Shocking Pink. Chanel is famous for making the sun-tanned look and costume jewelry popular, but her real genius lay in designing simple, classic wool jersey styles. Madeleine Vionette was famous for originating the bias cut technique for dressmaking. She used a small doll to make her designs, her famous bias cut dresses. Fashion designers generally worked for ready-to-wear manufacturers. A range of clothing was designed for a season and the collection was shown to buyers. Orders were placed and after production, the clothes would be sold through department stores. Main Boucher was an exception to designers of that time. He designed the wedding dress of Wallace Simpson, who married the Duke of Windsor. Claire McCardell was also an important sportswear designer of the time. She is famous for creating the collections of matching separates, dundle skirts, the monastic, a bias cut, a full tent dress, spaghetti or shoestring ties, the diaper bathing suit, ballet slippers and the poncho. Adrian was a celebrated film costume designer. Onto art that was typical of the 1920s and 1930s period. Geometric forms were used that were derived from past or present artistic expressions. Art Deco is notable in fashion when geometric lines of garments echo Art Deco style lines. These are also observed in fabric prints, embroideries, beaded decorations and jewellery. Bri brilliant reds, shocking pinks, electric blues, siren yellows, Tango oranges and metallic hues of gold, platinum, silver and bronze enjoyed great popularity. The discovery of Tutankhamun's tomb gave rise to the craze of antique shades such as gold, peach and turquoise. Egyptian styles, Negro and primitive art and the American jazz culture were, were assimilated readily into the vocabulary of Art Deco as were Aztec and Red Indian motifs. Energetic zigzag lines, angular and abstracted forms, and a brilliant palette combined to capture the spirit and sophistication of period tastes. Surrealism, meaning beyond the real, was a literary and art movement. Artists like Giorgio di Chico Chirico, Salvador Dali, and René Marguerite, Marguerite painted unconventional scenes and objects, drawing on the subconscious imagination. Fashion photographers frequently used surrealistic settings for their photographs of fashion. Schiaparelli used surrealistic motifs and unusual placements of those motifs in her designs. For women, undergarments came in a variety of styles. Drawers or knickers became panty. A combination garment called cami knickers, step-ins or teddies became popular. A chemise or petticoat was renamed the slip. Larger women wore corsets. 
garter belts were worn to hold up stockings. A figure with a flat bosom and narrow hips was ideal. The fashion silhouette was straight without indentation at the waistline. Belts were loose and worn at the hips. Skirt lengths shortened for the first half of the decade and then gradually lengthened, never quite reaching the floor though. Separate blouses and sweaters were popular. They were elongated, low-hipped and straight and worn over the skirt. For daytime, one-piece styles predominated. Necklines usually ended at the base of the throat or lower with round V-shaped bateau or cowl styles. Dresses were usually sleeveless or long sleeves. Skirts of dresses often utilized bias cutting to produce interesting effects. Skirts had pleats, gathers, placed off-center, scalloped hems, godet inserts and paneled effects in handkerchief skirts. Tailor suits had matching jackets and skirts. Chanel suit, a cardigan style jacket and a skirt made of wool jersey was very popular. Ensembles were matching dresses and coats or skirts over blouses and coats. Evening dresses were made in the same styles as daytime dresses. Sleeveless dresses were held up by straps, had more complex skirts. Jean Lavon introduced a bouffant skirt reminiscent of the crinoline period. It was called robe de style. Beading was a popular style of ornamenting. Fabrics like chiffon, soft satins, velvets and silks taffeta were used. Geometric art deco designs were frequently used as patterns. For the outdoors, char characteristic coats closed over the left hip often with one large decorative button or several small ones were worn. Clutch coats had to be held shut because they had no fastenings. Raccoon coats were popular with young men and women for motoring or spectator sports. Fur and fur trimmed capes were popular with the affluent. Long and low belted sweaters were also popular. Women kept their hair short like a bob or a shingle. Some women kept bangs at the front. Eaton crop was closely cropped and dressed like that of a man. Some women got a Marcel wave in their bob through rollers. Bobby pin had replaced the old hairpin. Hats were close fitted called the cloche was popular. Headbands with bejeweled feathers were also popular along with turban styles. For footwear, heels of shoes were two or two and a half inches in height, toes pointed or rounded. Short skirts caused women to focus on hosiery. Tan and flesh colored stockings were used widely. Rayon and silk was commonly used. Commonly seen styles included pumps or T-shaped straps. Oxford were worn for sports. Russian style white top boots were also worn. Young women affected the style of wearing their overshoes for bad weather or galoshes open and flapping. This may have been the origin of the term flappers. Undergarments for women in the 1930s emphasized the curves of the figure. The brassiere was cut to lift and emphasize the breasts. Terminology also changed. Panty became panty briefs and then only briefs as they grew shorter to fit under active sportswear. One-piece dresses, skirts and blouses and tailored suits remained wardrobe staples. In 1930s, silhouettes emphasized the natural form of the woman's body, the bosom. Waistlines and hips were clearly defined by the shape of the clothing. Hemlines lowered gradually, almost reaching to the ankles and then gradually making their way up again. The wartime period froze styles of the late 30s and early 40s. By the beginning of the war, skirts had become shorter, ending just below the knee and had grown fuller. Shoulders had broadened with pad insertions, bias cut was rarely used. In the early 30s, cowl necklines, cape collars and soft finishes such as bows and jabots predominated. Later, V necklines and collar dresses with yokes were common. Sleeve styles were long and full, gathered at the wrist. Short sleeves had cape-like constructions. Full sleeves were cut in raglan style or as magyar or batwing sleeves. 
at the end of the decade, puff sleeves came back into fashion. Most skirts were cut with several goes. Some had bias cut pieces set into yoke that covered the hips to create a skirt that was narrow but flaring. Fullness was also achieved by bock pleats or shirt sections. Suits were made in firmer fabrics. Some styles were modeled after men's styles. Wartime suits included bolero suits with short curving jackets that ended above the waist or Eisenhower jackets based on military jackets worn by Commander Dwight Eisenhower. In the 1940s, adolescents wore large, loose pullovers called sloppy joes. Movie stars who were photographed in tightly fitting sweaters for pin-up pictures were called sweater girls. About 1945, dirndl skirts became popular. Evening gowns reached to the floor. Bias cut styles were seen which flared out from the hips. Other features included bare-backed gowns cut low to the waist, halter-type sleeveless bodices and full cape-like or puffed sleeves. Outdoor garments for women. In the early 30s, the coats had decorations around the necklines and shoulder lines, large collars, fur details and sometimes Lego mutton sleeves. In the later half of the decade, the influence of war, the silhouette grew wider and shorter. Padding created a broader look. In the early years, hair was relatively short, softly waved and with short, turned-up curls around the nape of the neck. Towards the end of the decade, the hairstyles grew longer, the page boy bob and the upsweep were fashionable. Hats were small in scale, of different shapes and usually tipped to a side at an angle. In the 40s, hats tended to be small, like pillboxes and small bonnets. Working women in wartime factories covered their hair with turbans or wore snoods to protect hair from getting caught in machinery. Leather shoes were rationed during the war and cloth shoes were readily available. Stockings were made in flesh tones of silk and rayon and seamed at the back. Cotton and wool stockings were for sportswear. Teenage girls wore ankle socks and consequently came to be known as bobby sockers. Shortage of stocking during the war led women to paint their legs with leg makeup. Some even painted a dark line down the back of the leg in imitation of the seams. During this age, women were becoming more active participants in sports, as a result of which women adopted specific costumes for individual sports such as tennis, swimming and skiing and general informal dress for spectator sports and outdoor activities. By 1928, such clothes were referred as spectator sports styles by fashion magazines. By 1930, the clothing industry identified this new category of clothing as sportswear. Women began to appear in garments made like men's trousers for casual wear. These garments were called slacks and remained strictly a sportswear item. During the war, many women found slacks a very useful garment for working in factories. Tennis dresses grew shorter. The bodices of tennis dresses were sleeveless and collarless. Skirts were either short or divided culotte styles, and shorts were also worn. No special costume was required for golf, but tweed skirts with pullover sweaters worn over a blouse seemed to be favored. Swimming costumes altered drastically. Knickers grew shorter, armholes deeper, Necklines plunged lower and one-piece tank suits were adopted by women. Bathing suits were made from knitted wool, rayon, acetate and cotton. Lastex, a fabric made from rubber core covered by another fab fiber, was used to make suits that had stretch and were more form-fitting and wrinkle-free. Women could choose from bathing suit styles that included one-piece, two-piece, with either brassiere-like or halter necklines. Ski clothes consisted of full trousers and a sweater, or matching jackets. Women wore jodhpuris with high riding boots, shirts and tweed jackets for horse riding. Women used umbrellas as they were practical. Handbags ranged in sizes from large to dainty. Women wore gloves out of doors in the daytime. In the evening, long evening gloves appeared. Scarves were made of fabrics that contrasted with dresses. 
fur and exotic animal skins were used as accessories. Makeup became an accepted part of women's fashion. Fashionable ladies plucked their eyebrows into a narrow line, which was then emphasized with eyebrow pencil. Bright shades of rouge and lipstick were preferred. No dramatic changes in menswear took place from 1920s through the end of the World War II. Among the affluent, English Taylor retained his reputation as the best in the world. The Duke of Windsor was a trendsetter in clothing styles for men. Hollywood's leading men also started trends. Sack suits remained the basis of suits for all occasion. Vests, trousers and jackets matched in color and fabric. Only wealthy and prominent individuals wore morning coats for formal occasions. Those who could afford it wore white suits for summer during vacations. Underwear for more conservative men was a one-piece knitted union suit. These were available with short or long sleeves or legs. Boxer shorts were worn by professional boxers and this style was introduced as underwear in the 1930s. Athletic shirts were knitted cotton tanks with fitted brief shorts, trademarked jockey shorts. Later, a Y-shaped front opening was added. During the war, servicemen wore knit shirts, undershirts called T-shirts. After the war, civilian men continued to wear these undershirts and they came into general sportswear. Clark Gable appeared bare-chested and without an undershirt in the Hollywood movie, It Happened One Night. It is credited by some to have severely affected the underwear industry as it started a trend of going without a shirt. The Wallace Beery shirt, a ribbed knit undershirt with a buttoned vent at the top, at the front of the neck, became popular. This shirt is called a Henley shirt today. Business suits had natural shoulder lines, wide lapels and pronounced waists. Sleeves were short enough to show an inch of the short shirt cuff. During the 20s, trouser legs widened. The trend was part started by Oxford college students who wanted to wear knickers underneath their trousers so they could slip out of them soon after classes. These trousers came to be known as Oxford bags. Turtleneck jerseys became a substitute for shirts and ties. The Prince of Wales made the plage suit popular. The English drape suit became popular during the later part of the decade. Collar styles like Barrymore collar, California collar and Windsor or spread collar became popular. Zoot suits are associated with a dance form called jitterbugging with popular African-American music. The jacket was long with excessively wide shoulders and wide lapels. The trousers were pegged. Tailcoats were reserved for the most formal occasions. For evening jackets, the tuxedo style made in black or midnight blue with rolled collars or notched collars was favored. Coat styles included Chesterfields and Raglan styles. Raccoon styles were popular among the young. Polo coats were worn by the British polo team and the trend came to the USA. Zip-in linings made cold weather coats convertible to use in warmer temperatures. Short jackets with knit waistbands and cuffs. Parker jackets, lumber jackets or mackinaws and leather jackets were worn. Pea jackets, Eisenhower or battle jackets were also popular during the 1940s. During this period, jackets without matching trousers were called sports or casual jackets. These were worn with vests in matching or contrasting colors, pullover sweaters or shirts. Golfers adopted Norfolk jackets with a pleat at the back. The Prince of Wales made tweed jackets popular. Bush jackets, short sleeves, tan cotton jackets with four large flap pockets made to imitate styles worn by hunters and explorers in Africa. Sport jackets were often combined with knickers or plus fours and argyle socks. Walking shorts based on military costume of British colonial soldiers had been adopted by wealthy vac vacationers. Polo shirts were introduced. Dish rag shirts, Basque shirts, cowboy shirts and Hawaiian shirts were also worn. Lacoste knit tennis shirts were introduced in the 1920s. One-piece swimsuits were held on over the shoulders with shoulder straps. Sleeveless knit pullover shirts were worn with short trunks. 
In the 1930s, tops decreased in size until eventually men stopped wearing any covering for upper body. Skiers wore wool sweaters and plus fours. In the 1930s, wind-resistant jackets were adopted and worn with long trousers, cut full and gathered into an elasticated cuff at the ankle. For sleepwear, pajamas had largely replaced nightshirts. Robes were worn in flannel and kimono styles. Men kept their hair short and closely set to the scalp. Few men kept thin moustaches while most men went clean-shaven. Fedoras were popular hat styles among others as Homburg, straw boaters, Panama hats and sports caps. Pork pie was famous for sportswear. For footwear, sandals and cloth shoes were popular. Stockings became colourful, chevron, argyle and diamond pattern socks were popular. Elastic topped socks replaced the need for garters. High shoes went out of style and Oxfords became the predominant style. White and two-toned shoes were worn in the summer. Moccasin styles were adopted from Norwegian fishermen's footwear and nicked names Weegens. The main accessory were gloves, handkerchiefs, scarves, umbrellas and canes. Watches, tie pins, shirt studs, cufflings and rings were also used. Sunglasses were manufactured for the general public during this period. Toddlers wore loose, smock-like dresses that often had a yoke at the neck. Many had matching bloomers that could be seen beneath the short skirts. In the 20s, girls' dresses were unfitted and in the 30s, waistline of the dresses returned to anatomical placement. Older girls often had fitted bodices with skirts attached and a sash tied in at the back. Skirt fullness varied according to adult styles. Girls wore straight, narrow coats with princess line trimmed with fur collars. Coat styles also included single-breasted chesterfields with velvet collars, boy coats that were cut straight with patch pockets, wrap coats with tie belts and matching leggings. For school, skirts and blouses were common. Some skirts had straps or suspenders. For sports, girls also wore pullovers and cardigans over slacks. For boys, polo shirts were common. Cotton knit pullovers with napped surfaces were called sweatshirts. Boys wore sweaters of all kinds such as cardigans, pullovers and sleeveless pullovers. Dress coats followed the lines of men's dress coats. For everyday wear, the Mackinac was popular. Lumber jackets with knitted waistbands ending just below the waist was worn. Fingertip length boxy jackets, poplin jackets and waterproof parkas were also worn. Toddlers wore rompers or short pants. As boys grew, their pant lengths also increased. For dress occasions, boys wore long or Norfolk jackets.